Okay, we've made the transition here. We have gone from the preseason content, going over what you should be doing in your drafts, to now the regular season lineup decisions. And we are taking my start, sit, stash, quit column that I have done for, I don't even know how many years, six, seven years, something like that. And we are gonna do it as a video now. I'm gonna run through the my favorite starts, my favorite sits, a couple stashes, and then a couple guys that I think you should be quitting in standard regular leagues, one quarterback, one tight end. If it gets more specific than that, you can hit me up on Twitter at Justin Boone and you can ask me those questions there. Now, let's begin with the starts this week. And the very first one is a guy we've already talked about on the show today, Jaden Daniels going up against the Buccaneers. I've mentioned him on the show in the last few weeks as well. Somebody that I'm very excited about. I know he's a rookie. But you look at the overall profile, the guy has great rushing ability. The guy is also a pretty good deep ball thrower. I think they're going to take advantage of that. And this week, he's going against the Buccaneers. And the Buccaneers have notoriously been a pass funnel defense. Now, what that means is that they are very strong against the run. They have Vita Vea and those guys up front that are very stout stopping the run. So teams end up throwing against them and they've lost a few guys in the offseason on that defense as well. So it's the fact that I really like Daniels as a player and as a prospect. I think he's going to be able to deliver most weeks, but going up against this Bucks defense that allowed the seventh most fantasy points to quarterbacks last year and they allowed six rushing touchdowns to QBs. I really like Daniels this week. Shifting over to running back, my favorite start there. Another guy that we've been talking about all offseason long Kenneth Walker on the Seahawks. He gets the Broncos this week. All the talk during the offseason from the coaching staff has been that they're going to give Walker a ton of volume, that they like him as a three down back. And I think this matchup with the Broncos really favors him. Seahawks are going to be favored big in that game. I think there's going to be a lot of positive game script for him. And last year, the Broncos are one of the bottom five teams in terms of fantasy points allowed to running backs. So let's make sure you got Walker in your lineups. Now, the receiver that I'm going to recommend as a start is a little bit tricky because it's been changing throughout the week, right? It's T. Higgins on the Bengals, and the Jamar Chase situation has not been solved yet, but he was back at practice in the last few days, so it looks like he is going to be out there this week. Anything could happen over the last couple, uh, the next couple days here, but it really seems like Chase is going to play, yet he hasn't been practicing much before this. Higgins has been out there. Higgins is a guy that's in a contract year here. He wants to look as good as possible, and he's got that chemistry with Joe Burrow. And in games when Chase hasn't played, Higgins has been a wide receiver one. So in a game where I don't think Chase is going to be 100% himself this week, they'll, they'll bring him in. They might ease him in a little bit, though. I think Higgins is going to have a great game in this one, and he bumps up from normally being maybe in the wide receiver three territory to more of a wide receiver two. Now, Let's go to tight end here. And in the tight end this week, I'm going to pick one of the guys that's up at the top, a guy that I've been recommending that you should be drafting, Trey McBride on the Cardinals. And he's going up against my Bills this week. But here's the thing, Buffalo's defense, all the losses that they've had this offseason, whether it's the safety duo, and we're talking about trying to cover a tight end, the safety duo, Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, those guys are gone. And then Matt Milano, their best linebacker, and also their best coverage linebacker, He's out until December, maybe January. We'll see. Trey McBride last year down the stretch was a top five fantasy tight end. Kyler Murray loves throwing to him. He is going to have a great game, unfortunately, against my Bills this week, guys. Boone, love the picks. You got to tell me, how much of Jaden Daniels being on the board here was about you ending up with him in our office <laughs> league last night? <laughs> Be honest. Okay. In in all honesty, I submitted these on Tuesday. I wanted okay. to make sure that our graphics guys were able to, to make everything. So the draft was Wednesday night. I submitted them Tuesday. So it was like a thousand percent correlated. I definitely <laughs> love Jaden Daniels. I definitely want to see him have a great week one and a great season. He's on a, a bunch of my teams. Okay. Well, that. it was a lot of fun drafting right next to you all night and worrying <laughs> that you're going to take all my guys. So thanks for that. I think you stole more guys from me that I ended up stealing from you in that draft. But let's keep moving here. Let's go to the sits and the first quarterback sit this one breaks my heart because I've been talking him up Jonah mentioned it earlier Dak Prescott my bold prediction for MVP and yet week one I am telling you you probably want to sit Dak there's probably better options that you can get he's going up against this Browns defense 
one of the best defenses in the league. So difficult for quarterbacks to go up against that Browns defense. Last year, they were bottom five in terms of fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. They were also bottom five in completion percentage allowed. They were bottom five in touchdown passes allowed. And they were third in the most, most, third most interceptions last year. So this is a really, really tough matchup for Dak. He can still come through. He could still throw a couple touchdowns, but he's more down in that QB2 range this week. And that's why I'm guessing you could probably find somebody else to throw in your lineup this week that might be on the waiver wire, or maybe you took two quarterbacks, even though I don't normally recommend doing that. Now, the sit at running back, and it's a guy that we're gonna go back to that Vita Vea Buccaneers defense and their run D. We're gonna talk about Brian Robinson Jr., someone else who I've talked up is a great value in fantasy drafts, and yet this week, I hate the matchup for him. I think the, the commander's best chance here is gonna be running the ball with Daniels, throwing the ball over the top, I don't think you're going to get that much out of Brian Robinson Jr. He's more of just a touchdown or bust guy this week, so he falls a little further. Most weeks, he's going to be in the RB2 ranks. This week, he's down in that RB3 flex range. For receivers that I think you should be sitting this week, Calvin Ridley. And I kind of am interested to see how they're going to use him. Brian Callahan has sort of suggested that like he might try to make Ridley like the Jamar Chase in this offense. Remember, Brian Callahan coming over from the Bengals, did great work there. Is Ridley up to that? Probably not. But this week, I don't love the matchup. He's going against that Bears defense. Jalen Johnson, one of the best cornerbacks in the league. We don't know, especially this early in the season, whether they're going to shadow or anything like that. But I think this is a tough matchup. Seems like DeAndre Hopkins, even though he had that injury in the preseason, seems like he's going to be out there this week. So I don't think this is a spot where you want to start Ridley. In my mind, he's more of a wide receiver for flex option for you in your lineup. And I would hope that you have somebody else that you could throw in there. The tight end, and this is a funny one. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of insight on this. So I've been doing this article, like I said, for six, seven years. Finding a sit at tight end is incredibly difficult, right? Because a guy can go out and get a touchdown and that's essentially just gonna bump him up into like the low end tight end one ranks. And I have notoriously been picking guys like 50% of the time or more that end up scoring that touchdown. They might not have great yardage. They might only have 30 yards, 35 yards but they find the end zone once or twice. And then I get a bunch of messages from people going, why did you say to sit that guy? Well, it's hard to predict. Touchdowns are very volatile, but Njoku has a really bad matchup. The Cowboys allowed the fourth fewest fantasy points to tight ends last year. His best games last year came when Joe Flacco was out there. That doesn't mean that he can't have great performances with Deshaun Watson, but is Deshaun Watson 100% healthy? All that sort of stuff. Deshaun's missed time in the preseason. So I'm just shying away from Njoku and kind of treating him more as like a high end tight end too. And that boomer bust kind of touchdown or not tight end option for fantasy this week, guys. I think a lot of people, uh, this is how I think about it. Cause when you're going through this, I'm just thinking about my team selfishly. Of course. Um, I think there's a lot of questions of whether or not you invest in like an offense, like you talked about with relief you know, the Titans could be a team that are going to throw the ball a whole, whole lot more. And maybe you don't want to find out whether or not that's true this early in week one. I got a Ayuk and Ridley on my team. And I'm thinking, well, how much am I going to get from Ayuk from the fact he hasn't really been on the field and available in training camp. And he's got a tough matchup as well. So how are you, how would you handle maybe those, those two guys and who you want to play? I'm still going to go with Ayuk. I've also been somebody that just loves Brandon Ayuk. So yeah. maybe I'm not the best person to pick here. Fair. He's higher in my rankings though, this week, talent wise, a much better player, the offense, you know, even though the matchup is difficult, that 49ers offense, they can come through against basically any mm -hmm. defense on the other side of the field. So I'm going with Ayuk because it's not closer. Like Ridley is somebody that still, in my mind, needs to prove himself in this new destination. Yeah. And like you said, we need to see what this Titans offense is going to be, even though I do think it is going to be a lot better this year. But I, even though he maybe will play, let's say, even if he played 70, 80% of the snaps this week and they kind of rested him a little bit and had him on a pitch count, he's still a guy that can come through for fantasy. So unless we hear something about him barely being involved, which I highly doubt, yeah. you're going to want to lean towards the more talented player. And in my mind, that's All definitely right. I put uh, Ayuk's on my bench right now. I will say I did that, but I, wow. I think I might make the change. I think I might make the change because I right, do well, think, yeah, Jalen Johnson's a great point too. We can revisit it next week and we can see. Yeah, yeah that exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's the I'm best part. I'm not always right, but more often <laughs> than not, if you follow what I'm saying, it's going to lead to good things. Now let's go to the stash section. And unlike the tight ends, where I was saying I've had bad luck, you know, picking tight ends and then they end up scoring touchdowns. 
this stash section, one of the best things I have probably done over the last few seasons. People want me to turn it into like a full article where I'm giving them like 10 stashes. That might be a little bit harder to do, but essentially what the idea here is, is I'm finding players that are 10% rostered or less. Some little you know, odd time I'll go over by you know a percentage or two, but normally it's 10% or less. Trying to find those guys that are available in most leagues that you can throw at the end of your bench that might have a good game this week, might get more opportunity in the coming weeks, but you're jumping ahead of your league mates. You're getting these players before you have to go bid on them or use your you know waiver priority to try to get these guys on your team. So the two guys that I want to mention for this right now are two running backs. It's normally going to be running backs for this guys, but the first one, Kamani Vidal, and this goes back to the Dobbins thing that we were talking about earlier. Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, not great histories in terms of their durability. Are they going to be able to hold up all season? Dobbins, I worry that he's not going to be able to get back to what he was, even though you could argue, you know, what was he ever in the NFL because he's kind of always been hurt. But a great talent, but a guy that coming off an Achilles tear, I don't have a lot of faith that he's going to be able to have a great fantasy season. And Gus Edwards, somebody that's that north-south runner, doesn't give you much in the passing game, but again, a guy that's had a lot of injuries in his career. So you look deeper here. A day three running back, Kamani Vidal, and he's short, sort of like a, a short, stocky back. He's a hard-nosed runner. I think he could win over that coaching staff. I think he could get opportunity as the year goes along, and it might not require an injury to one of the other guys. It might just be that in practice and the opportunities he gets in games, that he starts to outperform some of those veteran backs on that team. And then we can go back to everything that Tyler said earlier, the offensive line there and the coaching staff and you know, the successful rushing attacks that Greg Roman's had in the past. So I'm looking at Kamani Vidal as somebody that you should be able to get. You probably had to take him in the last few rounds of your draft, but he is clearly out there in a lot of leagues. I'd be going out and picking him up, throwing him at the end of your bench. Let's see if he gets a chance in the first couple of weeks here. And the other guy, another day three pick, Tyron Tracy Jr. on the Giants. And this is another one where you could look at him as a player that might not require an injury to a guy ahead of him in order to get opportunity this season. He kind of complements Devin Singletary very well in that Giants offense, right? Singletary, somebody that coaches love, somebody that can kind of do everything well, but nothing really great. And Brian Dable has a history with Singletary. So we know early in the season, it's going to be Singletary. But Tyron Tracy Jr., a former receiver in college, really only played one full season of running back, more of an explosive player, a guy that has that pass catching profile that could get him opportunity alongside Singletary. And potentially if he's successful with that, maybe we see him get more opportunity as the year goes along. And if the Giants fall to the playoff race, guess what? They're going to want to see what else they have in their lineup on their depth chart they might give a guy like this a shot later in the season. So I think he's somebody that you want to get and stash right now before he gets that big opportunity, guys. Who do uh, people definitely want to know this when they're watching? Who, who would you say has a better chance of getting an opportunity regardless of health of their, their running backs in front of them? Like, I, would I would go with Tyron Tracy Jr. Uh, I think just because he has less guys to compete with in that backfield. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I think with the way Devin Singletary is, people kind of sour on Singletary and I love him. I think he's underrated, but again, not somebody that has that really high ceiling where Tyron Tracy Jr. with the receiving ability, maybe he could give you a higher ceiling for fantasy and maybe the coaching staff realizes that they need more weapons than just Malik neighbors in that offense. Yeah. Right? So uh, hopefully Tyron Tracy Jr. will get a chance to prove that this year. Now, maybe a little more controversial here. We're going to talk about two players that I think you can quit and I'm trying to pick guys that are over 50% rostered for this section. And like I said earlier, we're looking at like single quarterback leagues, single tight end leagues. If you have like special scoring, that's a different story. But for this one, I normally don't take a second quarterback if it's just a one quarterback league. So somebody like Aaron Rodgers, I don't really see the ceiling for him at this stage in his career. I know he has the name, but what is he really gonna be able to do? All I wanna see from him is give me enough so that Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall and some of these other pieces in the Jets offense can have some ceiling outcomes because Aaron Rodgers is not going to run that much at this phase of his career. So how would he get into the top 12 guys? It would require, he would need like 40 touchdown passes or something, right? And I'm not sure we're going to see that from Rodgers. He tends to slow his offenses down. He spends a lot of time at the line, which is great for the success of the team. But for fantasy, I would much rather have like the Colts offense, like Shane Steichen, who's going to run a ton of plays. We're going to get a lot of volume out of them. 
I'm not so sure we're going to see that from the Jets. So Aaron Rodgers, somebody that I don't think you need to roster unless it's a two quarterback or super flex league. And to be clear, in those super flex leagues, of which I am a member, Rodgers still projects as like a higher end QB2. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say higher end, but there's sort QB2? of mid range to yeah. low end. There's sort of a really big tier there um, from maybe say like quarterback 15 to like quarterback 22 or 23. Yeah. And he's right in there. And you were messaging me during your draft <laughs> last night, not so much for advice, but just telling me who you would pick. I, and I was kind of, I was giving yeah. you like instant reaction, probably not always the instant reaction you wanted, because when you told me you took Rogers, I was like, oh, I think you might've got better value later. And there were other guys available, Geno Smith, who I really like, yeah. but yeah, Rodgers is fine in one of those leagues, as long as you're getting him at a good value and as long as you're not paying up to get him, you make sure he's going off the board, you know, after the top 15 or top 17 or 18, then I'm okay with it there. Now we got one more uh, quit that I want to mention before we get out of here. Cole Komet, somebody who I've talked about as a player that I've really liked in fantasy before, but one of the reasons for that was they didn't have many other options in that Bears offense. Now, Totally different story. DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze. Uh, they have uh, DeAndre Swift in the backfield and they have Gerald Everett at tight end. And Gerald Everett has a history with Shane Waldron, their offensive coordinator. So that is going to be a factor in the preseason. We saw this, that Komet and Everett were out there, that he was sort of splitting reps, that they were both playing. That's going to be a problem for Cole Komet. And he now becomes just a guy that's going to sort of be touchdown or bust. And maybe he'll be one of the sits in my column <laughs> at some point, And maybe he'll score two touchdowns. But, you know, he's a guy that I don't think you need to roster. And the fact that he is rostered right now in 62% of leagues, it seems kind of crazy to me. You don't need to hold a second tight end. Grab one of the early guys. And if you need to go to the waiver wire later, you can. But you don't need to have somebody like Cole Komet. There are probably better options you could look to. Right on. Booney. Thanks so much. As always, great stuff. I got to say, I feel like regular season boon, there's a little more pep in your step. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. You had a very, a very peppy step previously, but now this is just like a, a different version. Yeah, it's a super exciting time of year, right? I, I can't wait to actually see some real football on the field. And we know there's a lot of things that we're going to get right in week one. There's also a lot of things we we're going to find out we were wrong about. Tons of surprises. And that's what's so exciting. Yeah, man, that's uh, that's why they play the games. Uh, thanks so much, as always, Booney. Uh, and thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, that's Justin Boone. That's Tyler McKillop. That's Sam Wilkins. My name is Jonah Bierenbaum. Thanks for checking out this episode of No Timeouts. We'll see you next time.